नमस्कार सर नमस्कार आप कभी कभी दर्शन देते हैं नहीं सर ये आजकल वो ऑफलाइन हो गया ना कभी कहीं इनोग्रेशन के लिए आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव इसके अंतर्गत हमने ये वेब सीरीज शुरू करी है सो मोस्ट वेलकम प्रोफेसर बलदेव सिंह ढिल्लो वेरी डिस्टिंग्विश साइंटिस्ट of our region Thank of the nation and of the world welcome and i and also welcome to professor jairup singh who has already been on our forum a number of times so welcome to all the listeners as well and i now hand over to professor grover who will say a few words professor grover thank you kya it's indeed my pleasure to say something at the beginning at the start of the 12th lecture in our series on institution building and the nurture initiatives in india today's lecture is titled as indian council of agricultural research punjab agricultural university and the agricultural research in india and it is being delivered by one of the tallest academics of punjab an internationally renowned agricultural scientist professor baldev singh jello in the presence of an another equally renowned academician as guest of honor namely professor jairup singh it is a serendipity that professor b s dillo and professor jairup singh have known each other since their college days together at khasa college amritsar they parted at that time and chose diff slightly different domains for further study and research Professor Dillo went to Punjab Agricultural University and later on to ICR where he did his PhD. Then Professor Jairu went to All India Institute of Medical Sciences for genetic research. So our speaker, Professor Dillo, rose to the rank of Director of ICR's Bureau of uh, Plant Genetics and uh, Research at New Delhi, and uh, Professor Jairu. set up the department of genetics at gndu and later on went on to become the vice chancellor in 2006 first of gndu and later on the first vice chancellor of uh, central university of bhatinda professor jairu also served uh, after his retirement he had gone away to germany but he was invited as a vice chancellor of his own alma mater punjab agricultural university and he served there for over a decade the longest time tenure that he has as a vice chancellor ca can you mute others my part hello so i i am personally very excited about today's lecture it's my premise that the trading east india company they okay, had no interest in education or, or research but they tolerated the spread of education by the missionaries in india because at least it gave them few english speaking natives with whom to whom they can assign some minor jobs the east india company had earned the rights to collect taxes uh, in 1765 so roughly it, it is the time when the industrial revolution was also shaping in england so to sell those industrial goods in india and and india being an agricultural country they had to worry about the welfare and the productivity of farmers because if there is no money that the indians have to buy their industrial goods how will the trading company survive so this is the reason why colonial government preferentially had interest in promoting agricultural education 
and research. So we are going to listen to this saga from Professor Dillo himself. He sent us a, a longish abstract, which I was very delighted to read. And I'm very, very happy that Professor Dillo accepted our invite and we are here with him today to learn about how the agricultural agenda of India has evolved. So with this, I conclude my opening remarks and thank you very much. Back to Kate. Thank you, Professor Grover. And now it is my turn to ask Professor Pramila Patak, Department of Botany, Punjab University, to introduce the guest of honor. But before that, allow me to say two sentences about Pramila. Pramila is a very distinguished professor of botany from our university. In fact, Pramila has an orchid named after her. Very rare thing. You have a flower named after you. So over to Pramila. Please introduce Chief Guest. Such scholars and students. It's my proud privilege to introduce an eminent scientist, Professor Dr. Jairu. Closer to Mike Pramila, your voice is not coming fully. Okay, sir. I will see. Adjust your mic a little bit on the headphone. Okay. okay. Is it okay, sir? Is it okay, sir? A bit better. It's Pramila, okay. thoda jor se bol. Okay. <laughs> So respected dignitaries, distinguished scientists, dear colleagues, this are dear such scholars and students, very good morning. It is my proud privilege uh, to introduce an eminent scientist, Professor Dr. Jairup Singh, sir, our uh, guest of honor for today's function, which is being organized by SPSTI and Chandigarh chap chapters of Nasi, Nyas and Insight, supported by Haryana State Council of Science, Innovation and Technology in association with PEC. Professor Dr. Jairup Singh is an honorary professor, Punjab University, Chandigarh, founder, vice chancellor, central. <laughs> founder, vice chancellor, central University of Punjab, Punjab, Bachinda, and former vice chancellor, GND University, Amritsar. He has done his PhD from All India Institute of Medical Sciences in 1973 and is a recipient of various honors and awards, including fellowship of academies, and he had also been the president Indian Society of Human Genetics. He is a member of many professional bodies, including International Association of Human Biologists, Pushpa Gujral Science City Society, and Rotary World Eye Foundation India. An internationally recognized scientist, Professor Dr. Jairup Singh is amongst pioneers of human genetics in India. He has done significant research on genetics of eye diseases, diabetes, and population disease profiling. Following his strategy for identifying candidate genes, his research group has localized several genes for congenital cataract. He was visiting professor in many foreign universities, has delivered over 100 invited talks internationally or international nationally and is represented on many national international academic bodies. He has over 100 research publications in journals of national and international repute. So let us all welcome Professor Dr. Jairup Singh on this platform today and request him to deliver his special address as guest of honor. Thank you so much. Amla, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and I now request Professor Jairup Singh to say a few words on this occasion. Professor Jairup Singh. Uh, thank you much, uh, Professor Romila Patak for your nice words. And I also thank Professor Kia Tarambir and Professor Aaron Grover for having given me this opportunity. Now, <clears throat> I had been your student, sir. In 1982, I had joined GND University as MSc student, and you had taught us, sir. <laughs> For one month, I was there. <laughs> I still remember Thank your uh, lectures, sir. Thank you. Now, in fact, you know, Spiti, and especially uh, Professor Taramir and Professor Grover, uh, they need a lot of congratulations for having initiated this series of uh, institution building lectures. And uh, the topic for today is extremely important because starting from what India was always facing the famines, and now we are talking of exporting the food to the world, 
and when all this Ukrainian uh, crisis. No, Hanji. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Now, this from uh, you know, famine stricken to food surplus, the two institutions which have played the greatest role is this ICAR and the PAU. And uh, there could not have been a better speaker than Professor Baldev Singh Tedlo to talk about these two institutions because he is the one who has been associated with various, in various capacities with both the institutions for over 50 years. And uh, starting from ICR, started from uh, 1929, first as Imperial Insti Council of Agriculture Research, and then to Indian Council of Agriculture Research, has grown now with over 101 institutions of ICR spread over all over India. Similarly, PAU started with a humble beginning in 62, and now it is among the top universities of India and has uh, played a, you know, one of the most significant role in the green uh, revolution of Punjab. And this development of PAU from a humble beginning to 62 and to the present level, which is internationally recognized institution is on, I would say primarily because of the number of visionaries which headed this university. And the uh, latest among them, we all know it's Professor Baldev Singh Tillo, who has, uh, I just wrote to him yesterday, I asked him, you know, send me your brief bio data. And he sent a brief one, which is 10 pages long. I said, I'm totally flattered. So I'm not going to do that one. He's a very distinguished uh, personality, down to earth person and has been honored by numerous fellowships of various academies at all India, at India level as well as at the international level, and has been at very responsible positions, both in a, a ICAR, its associated institutes, and also international institutions. Well, I am proud that I have been his classmates have been, we had good days together as students. And uh, incidentally, as uh, we grow <laughs> up in the two different streams, we again uh, converge here in Mohali now after retirement. Well, thank you again, Professor Grover, Professor Tarambir, for uh, giving me this opportunity to listen to my friend. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Professor Jairup Singh, for those encouraging words. And now I request Dr. Vishwajit Singh to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Vishwajit Singh. Dikh rahe hai? Apne naam se to nahi dikh rahe hai. Dr. Vishwajit Singh, have you joined? So I think he has okay. not been able to join, Good but evening. Professor Grover, as usual, knows a lot about the speaker. And maybe Professor Grover takes one minute and then we start the lecture. Professor Grover, can you please unmute yourself? Is he there? My apne naam se to nahi hai. V.S. Hansa. His name is V.S. Hansa. That's a, he is the same person from a yeah, His call has come here. Yeah, yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Vishwajit Singh. Yeah, he is. Uh, V.S. Hansa. That's right. Yeah, he My is a name, person. Brother Hansa is un yeah. unable to unmute himself. My part. Yes, sir. What is the name of the Please allow Professor Hans to unmute himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kishan, Kishan, now you're doing it, sir. Now, I'm going to take it away. Mahipal, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
वो विजय किस नाम से जुड़े हुए हैं प्रिय संत देखिए महिपाल कैन यू हेयर मी महिपाल यस सर यस सर सर्च कर रहा हूँ उनको सर एक मिनट प्लीज अलाउ हिम टू अनम्यूट हिम सर प्लीज वेटिंग सर किस नाम से जुड़े हैं वो नाम नहीं मिल रहा है वी एस हंस वी एस हंस ये नाम होना चाहिए उनका हंस लिखते हैं वो अपना नाम बताए सर ना मुझे नाम ही मिल रहा हूँ डॉक्टर बी एस नाम है सर एक नहीं नहीं बी नहीं है विश्वजीत वी विश्वजीत जी जी डॉक्टर सर ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ ਜੀ ਹੈ ਜੋਇਨ ਫਰਮ ਫੋਨ ਮੈਂ ਨਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਮਿਊਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਅਨਮਿਊਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਰਿਹਾ ਔਰ ਕੀ ਕਿਸ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਐਸ ਹੰਸ ਤੇ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਐਸ ਹੰਸ ਮੈਂ ਸਰ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਨਾ ਡਿਸਕਨੈਕਟ ਕਰਕੇ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਕਨੈਕਟ ਕਰਦਾ ਓਕੇ 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 ਵੀ ਐਸ ਹੰਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਸਰ ਹੀ ਹੈ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਵੀ ਐਸ ਹੰਸ ਐਚ ਏ ਐਸ H A N S and uh, he is not being allowed to unmute. And he says again. that he will rejoin again. Yes, yes. Hello. Maybe. Sir, I was talking to him, so he must be busy. I hope he is using the Zoom link and not the YouTube link. He is an engineer, so he should know better than. Okay, please join just... again. Which 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 name are you joining? Vs Hans. Okay. So he got disconnected. He is joining again. Yes. Vs Hans is his name. Vs okay. Hans. G. V V for Vishwajit. हाँ जी हाँ जी फोटो यस पर
Hello, are you able to join now? Otherwise, Professor Grover, oh. let him speak on the phone and you put I'm the back. phone in front of the speaker. Uh, am I visible now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I have uh, joined us, Dr. Manpreet Singh. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much for joining us. Most welcome. And now we invite you to please introduce Professor B.S. Dillon. Okay, honorable speaker, sir, guest of honor of the day, respected office bearers, audience, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I have been interested <laughs> in the responsibility of introducing the eminent speaker to the audience. The contribution and achievements of the honorable speaker are so many that it is difficult to do justice with these in such a short period of time. However, I will try my level best to do it. As you are aware that just after independence, India was finding it difficult to feed its population due to shortage of food grain. The Indian Green Revolution made it possible to convert India from fruit deficit nation to a food surplus nation. Government policies, hard work of scientists working in different institutions and contribution of industrious farmers made tremendous contribution in realizing the Green Revolution. Since then, the Indian agriculture has developed so much and ICR as well as PAU played a pivotal role in this development. To elaborate on the role of ICR and PAU in agricultural research in the country, I think today's speaker, Padam Shri Awadi, Dr. B.S. Tillon, uh, the former vice chancellor of PAU is the best suited person for this purpose. Born on June 27, 1947 at Bilesh Duburji in the Amritsar district, Dr. Baldev Singh Tellon has outstanding academic credentials. He obtained his doctorate from Indian Agricultural Research Institute, New Delhi, MSc from Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana, and BSc from Khalsa College, Amritsar. He has backed many prestigious scholarships, fellowships, that included postdoctoral fellowship, namely German Academic Exchange Service, which is uh, popularly known as DAD Fellowship, Alexandra von Humboldt Fellowship, University of Hornheim Fellowship to work at the university in Germany, as well as uh, uh, Euro Fellowship to work at University of Birking, Bir <coughs> Birmingham, USA. Dr. B.S. Tillon is a world-renowned scientist in the field of plant breeding and genetic resources. During his illustrious career, Dr. Tillon served in different national and international research organizations in different capacities. So these organizations include ICR, PAU, University of Onheim, uh, CIMIT also, so as a mage breeder, he started his career in PAU and developed 16 varieties that have been used commercially at national and state level and 59 inbreds and six heterotic poles that have been used commercially and served as genetic resource in India and abroad. Dr. Tillon, during his uh, uh, stint as vice chancellor of PAU, streamlined the research in integrated management of natural resources and applied inputs, integrated biotechnology with crop improvement, food technology with nutrition and processing, and in crop residue management also, which is a very uh, important and uh, area on which focus is there at the national level. As a result of his initiatives and under his dynamic leadership, PAU was ranked as a best agriculture university and third best agricultural research institute in India by ICR in 2017, ranked first in Punjab and second best agriculture university in India by Union Ministry of Human Resource Development in 2017, ranked first in research articles and citations in 2017, occupied first position for development of landmark varieties 
And this honor was given by Indian Society of Genetics and Plant Breeding. Apart from this, PAU was adjudged as one of the 70 icons of modern India by leading magazine India Today in its special issue on 70 years of independence. And it was entitled as Icons of Modern India. During uh, his stint as director ICR, NBPGR, he developed germplasm evaluation network, started comprehensive evaluation rice, wheat, chicken, pea, and created database on introduced and indigenous collections. Apart from this, uh, I would like to add here that Dr. Tino has many firsts to his credit, and he has contributed tremendously, tremendously towards the agricultural research in PA. And uh, in the state bureaucracy, it is a, a known fact that if you want to learn about agriculture in India and particularly in Punjab, it is best thing to do is to spend time with Dr. Tillo. He is uh, in fact known as an encyclopedia of agriculture in Punjab and India also. And to his credit, he was awarded Padam Shri by the government of India in 2019. So with these words, I introduce Dr. B.S. Tillo to the audience. And I hope that audience will be able to learn about the role of PAU ICR in the agriculture research. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hans. Very interesting information that you have given. Thank you very much. And now I request Professor Dillon to start his lecture. Professor Baldev Singh Dillon. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jairup Singh, guest of honor, Dr. Tarmirji, president of the society, Dr. Arun Grover. Uh, I will say the chief organizer of all the things and bringing us together. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ma'am Kia Paramvir, eminent personalities in the audience from ICR, from PAU, from Delhi, uh, Chandigarh Academic Circle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, Sasri Kal, Namaskar. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hans, for very kind words. Uh, it is all teamwork, support from the family, and above all, Paramatma di Rabdi Kirpa. Uh, God's blessing are to be there and good colleagues are be, must be there. So it is no great pride and privilege for me. And I thank uh, the society for this opportunity, particularly Dr. Arun Grover. Dr. Arun Grover, not only he, he motivated me to speak on this. I said that some it is very difficult, but uh, he provided me some material also. And uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, may I share, please? May I share these slides? Yes, sir. Yes. Mahipal, please help him to get this. Yeah. Yeah, here. Uh, I have to go to projection mode, full slide, slide show. Yeah, it's working now. Now, if you see the title uh, in the city, it is Institute of Building and Independent India. So first of all, I laid more emphasis on institution building, but uh, for such an organization as ICR, it is not easy to put together everything. Then secondly, it is independent India and ICR came into existence in 1929. And it was reorganized, we'll come to that in 1965, when really it became Indian Council. So there are four components, pre-independence, then independence to 1965, and then after 1965. Then in addition to building, the component is performance of these institutes and some talk about some critique, some issues, etc. So the summary Dr. Guru, which I sent to you, 
there I try to stick to this uh, uh, setup. But in the presentation, because that was quite complex, saying that this is pre-ICR, this is pre-independence, and this is after independence. But here in the presentation, I have put those things together just to make the presentation a little bit easier. So with that, uh, I move on. So first of all, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, it is a, an organization with Department of Agriculture Research and Education, commonly known as DARE. And its mandate on the whole is research coordination, conducting also, planning, conducting, and promoting research, similarly about education, frontline extension. It's not extension education, it is a frontline extension. Then policy, international collaborations, etc. I have a large number of slides, so I will be just focusing on the certain points. I try to put together everything instead of giving only a few slides. So now the land uh, landmarks. Uh, why the slides are not coming full? What is the reason? Can here there's something on the top I can do? No, we are seeing it full. Okay, then it is fine. So it's mended. I have touched it. Now the landmarks. In 1929, Imperial Council of Agriculture Research came into existence on the report of Royal Commission of Agriculture. And in 1948, in June, I had written here data also because at many places they write 1947 also. It was renamed as Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Then 1957, before ICR has really control of the institutions, the All India Coordinator Research Project on the recommendation of giant Indo-American team, it was started. First one was in Maze. I happened to work in that. And with the success of Maze project, now it is an 82 disciplines or commodity. I'll come to that later on. Then first university in agriculture education, deemed university status, uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute. 60. I think that was on major boost, 96, establishment of the universities, state agriculture universities, then later on came Central Agriculture University also. First one was in 1960, Panthanagar. Then second was Orissa University of Agriculture and Technology at Bhuvaneshwar, 1962. And after a few months in the same year, PAU came into existence. Then real things started as far as ICR is concerned, 1965, first time reorganization. Creation of one position of director general and four positions of director, deputy director general. And uh, Dr. B.P. Paul, an eminent uh, agriculture scientist from erstwhile Jalandhar district. He was born here. I will come to that later on, to that aspect. He was first DG before that. ICR was just acting as a society attached to Department of Agriculture of Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Agriculture, name of the ministry changed over years. Then from 1960 on, Ministry of Agriculture and Commodity Committees, there were also commodity committees, uh, these are abolished, they came in the purview of ICR, it started in 1966, all were not shifted immediately. So here is the copy of the Royal Commission report and here main building in Krishi Bhavan. Then 1973, the second reorganization. In this year, a Department of Agriculture Search and Education was created, small department, and DG ICR was given concurrent duty, concurrent responsibility of safety day. So now ICR, the DG ICR has twin responsibility connected to the Government of India also as a secretary and also director general of ICR as a, uh, I mean, director of the society. Then in 1973, ICR started Agriculture Search Recruitment Board. In 1974, this was again a major step. First, Krishi Vigyan Kendra. I will come to that later on why, why I am saying first major step. 1975, ICR started agriculture such service. Now all scientists in ICR institutes, they are under this service and the common rules and regulation, they can be transferred everywhere. Many major projects came, but first major project which came was nine, uh, 1979 NARP, National Agriculture Research Project. 
it was funded by IBR, the International uh, Bank for Rural Development. And in that, the regional stations, they were expanded. For example, in Punjab, I was an uh, associate professor at the time I prepared the project. The regional station at Gurdaspur, it was established in 19, 1911, Gurdaspur station. At Jalandhar, at Kapoor Thala, at uh, Bhatinda, these centers, they were upgraded so similarly throughout India. They, it was one major project. After that time, not listing the project. Then again, major step came in 1993 when ICR also established a Central Agriculture University. First one was at Impul, now there are three. Then 96, National Agriculture Education Accreditation Board was established. Then National Gene Bank, now it is the second largest gene bank in India. It was established in 1996. Then 2001, National Agriculture Science Center. You, most of the colleagues be, being from, not from agriculture, you must be aware of agriculture, uh, this uh, National Science Center of, uh, which we have near, uh, uh, and this, uh, uh, and I, I mean, uh, Habitat Center, Indian, Indian Center, et cetera. The, the small one, uh, I think CSIR or INSA, I think CSIR. On the pattern of that, ICER established a very big one. I will show you the photograph of that. So after 1963 reorganization, a number of institutions were transferred to ICR, plus number of institutes were established. So I cannot go in detail of all those, but I will go into detail and, or some history. That history roots are before, I will say, independence, but after that we made media development. So, uh, national Agriculture Research System, National Agriculture Research System to National Agriculture Research and Education System. Then came National Agriculture Research Education and Extension System, as I told you about Krishi Vigyan Kendra. And now we simply refer to it as National Agriculture System. So ICR apex bodies coordinating, guiding, and managing. You will find different words in different uh, publications. One of the largest system in the world with 112 ICR institutes, 71 agriculture universities, and four central universities having agriculture faculty spread across the country. It has eight divisions at the ICR headquarters. Initially, in the earlier slide, I mentioned four. So when this reorganization was done, they separated horticulture from crop science, fishery from animal science, agriculture engineering from natural resource management, earlier it was soils, agronomy, and engineering, name of the division, and created new division of agriculture extension. That is how then the NARS became to NARS and then NARIS. And in addition, we have a position of national director these are major projects since 1989, almost continuously. National Agriculture Technology Project, National Agriculture Innovation Project, National Agriculture Higher Education Project. So we have nine deputy DGs and one DG. So this is a, a, a view of uh, uh, ICR site. Now coming to, yeah, again details. Uh, this out of uh, 112 institute, 101 are research institutions, and 11 are institution. We have 731 KVKs, and then they are being managed by 11 institutions in different uh, regions of the country, known as Agriculture Technology Application Research Institutes. Of oh, these 101, four are deemed universities, IERA, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, at New Delhi, National Dairy Research Institute at Karnal, Indian Veterinary Research Institute at Isnagar near Mukteshwar, and Central Institute of Fishery Education. This is the latest one. Then 68 institutes, institutions, like, I mean, major institutions, you can say, like one with Indian Institute of Major Research, Lidiana. Then 12 are National Research Center, little bit lower. For example, National Research Center on Camel. Camel is not as important as maize. Then 11 research projects, so still little level, lower level. For example, Directorate of Floriculture at Pune. We know floriculture again is not that important. Six bureaus uh, keeping taking care of uh, natural resources. For example, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources and National Gene Bank. Similarly, we have uh, National Bureau for Fishery. For animal science, we have at Karnal. One is uh, 
uh, Euro for land use survey, etc. So that's about uh, research and Now coming to universities, 71, it was a major step in the establishment of uh, agriculture university on the pattern of land grant university university land grant university means that the university in the us were given large land area so they were doing research extension uh, uh, teaching research and little bit extension also so of, of these uh, 71 64 are state agriculture university some are having everything but some are only agriculture as PAU, some are horticulture as the one at Karnal coming up, some are animal sciences at Guru Angadej University at Ludhiana, some are fishery, there are only few fishery. Four ICR deemed university, which I mentioned earlier also. These four are counted on both sides. Please, if someone totals up, should not confuse. These are counted as a certain institution also and in the university also. Then three central agriculture university. First one was Ampel, second one was Bihar, and third one is in Budel country. In addition, there are 82 All India Coordinated Research Project. Uh, they are unique in themselves. I, I, I think these are the backbone of research system. I will come to that later on. Only there are 54 All India Coordinated Research Project as in case of maize, then 25 simply network. There is a little bit difference as road and control. That is not that important. So 25 are network, but only we count them together. Then uh, ICR has a responsible international cooperation also. We have two international institutes. Yeah, CG means consultative group on international agriculture research because that's the two big names, so I wrote only CG, which is most common. And there are some other institutions which are outside the purview of CG system. So two CG institutions have headquarters in uh, India, one at Hyderabad, other at And these are all Simmership, Ikada, CG institution. They have their either centers or scientists and these two are outside the period of CG in institutes. Biodiversity International started as CG institution. Now it is independent of CG and Kabi is this Commonwealth Agriculture Bureau. So they have also their scientists in India. Then a look at, as I said earlier, that uh, the agriculture development of agriculture search system started pre ICR era, before 1929. So in 1980, uh, 80, 80, we have Famine Commission report, which led to the creation of Department of Agriculture. Before that, there was no Department of Agriculture. Their mandate was improvement of agriculture apart from famine law. So as Dr. Uh, uh, Grover have also mentioned the beginning, the, the idea in the beginning entirely different. So in the beginning, they just thought of famine relief. Then, of course, came what uh, that uh, uh, commerce is. I will come to that commerce later on. So first gentleman, he was representative from uh, Royal Agriculture Society. He was appointed as consulting chemist. After that, the initiatives came. In 1989, Imperial Bacterial Laboratory was established at Pune. Now it is Indian Veterinary Research Institute. Now, many times we think and we criticize, oh, the name is being changed and place is being changed. You will see how the things have moved earlier also. 1905, now I will say one of the most uh, important institution. And I feel proud that I'm, uh, I, and I did my doctorate from there. The Indian Agriculture Research Institute, then as Imperial Research Institute at Pune. Again, I will come to history later on. Now, six colleges were established. Mostly it is written that Kambitur, Kanpur, Nagpur, Pune, and Subur were early recommended. Lalpur, now in Pakistan, came it, it was later on some people may have intervened, etc. And years are mentioned different at different places. So I put 1905 to 1908. And certain write-offs, probably the decision was taken in 1905. So it is written in 1906 also. Lalpur was established in 1906. Whereas Poor and Pune in 1908. But most Which is first level put there right later on. Now, coming to the history of some of the 
ICC are, but they are the main institutes uh, in the ICR setup. 1989, Imperial Victoria, it moved to Mukteshwar. 1913, the campus at Izzat Nagar came, where now there is headquarter. Then it was renamed, again renamed, I'm not, actually not given this year, why to confuse? So different names are there. 1936 renamed as Imperial Veterinary Research Institute. So penalty mute name because then in 1947 renamed as Indian. College of Animal Science started at the same time at which the college at IERA, they call it PG school, was established in 1950. ICR, but it got deemed university status about in 1983, whereas IERA got earlier. Now, here we come to IERA. 1905, Agriculture Search Institute established. It is now the place known as Pursa Bajar. When I visited this place first time in 1975, I said, where is Pursa village? They said, there is no Pursa village, there is a Pursa Bajar. At that time, could not understand and about this, uh, Dr. Grover knows history more than me. Uh, there was a gentleman, Henry Phillips from Chicago. He had some relationship with Lara Irwin at that time. Uh, and he donated uh, $30,000 for establishment of uh, a college on the Patronal Land Grant University. So it was established there. Again, it was renamed. Again, renamed. In 1934, there was an earthquake. So the institute was shifted in 1936. It was inaugurated New Delhi. So at New Delhi, if you ask for any, uh, this, uh, now there are no Tangawalas. When I was a student, there were Tangawalas also there. I mean, most of the person who were not that much educated, it's more known as Pusa rather than IRA. As I, uh, as uh, Ames is more known as medical. If you ask someone less known, they were called simply medical, not uh, Then it was renamed as Indian Actors Institute in 1947. And many stalwarts, I will say, served this institute as director. First Indian was Dr. B. Vishwanath. Then I had written Dr. Pruth. He was second one being Punjabi. I had written his name. Then J.N. Mukherjee, a great soil scientist. He was there and he is the person who was interested to have college first. Then Dr. A.B. Yoshi, who I will say was as important as intelligent as Dr. B.P. Paul or Dr. Swaminathan, but he missed to be DG of ICR, H.K. Jain, who worked later on CG Institute, Dr. R.B. Sangin, he's, uh, he's still there. All others have, I mean, those who have mentioned here, there. Then two persons, they played highly significant role in the development of IERI and in ICR, we'll come to them later on. I, I mentioned them separately, Dr. B. P. Paul and Dr. M. S. Swaminath. Then agriculture education, Professor Jain Mukherjee, when he was director, he moved to the idea in 1958. PG schools was established, became uh, deemed university on the same year. It was gained on the recommendation of the Giant Indo America team, which recommended for state agriculture universities, which recommended also for coordinated projects. Coordinated projects are genetic, I will come to them. Then you see here, Department of Agriculture established an institution on sugarcane breeding uh, institute computer. Initially the name was sugarcane research station, simply research station. Reem named as sugarcane research institute and transferred to ICR in 1969. It took some time because some people may have registered. Then CA Barbar was first uh, person. And he started interspecific hybridization. This really revolutionized uh, the work in uh, sugarcane. Uh, I'll come to that work a little bit only. Then okay. he was followed by Dr. Venkat Raman. Just see, oh, he was yeah. director from 1918 to 42. And he came to be known as sugarcane wizard. And first interspecific variety, I don't know who was director at that time. It's not mentioned anywhere because both are director, they, they, they changed. First interspecific variety CO205. Initially, they started sugarcane breeding for semi-tropical area, where Punjab comes, not for tropical 
not maize, sugarcane. Tropical sugarcane work they started later on. This became a huge success. Then later on, a variety released in, C, uh, in 1928. It dominated three, three decades. When I was a BSc student at Khalsa Kajamsa, one of the varieties which was mentioned was CO1312, uh, 1964-65. This variety was dominating in Punjab. And many of, if someone of you, maybe Dr. Kansa, maybe elder to me or maybe of my age. The world Puna came at that time in 1960. The, the, the sugar candy, the uh, Joe Gunnam, Aj, the same Prana Gunnam, Mujabita, we were suing. I belong to Amasa, I mean, our district. Punjabi, the world Kamad, sugar cane. Hindi may eek, eh? Parja, some HBTI Kanpur. They have been doing research at sugar also. That's a lot of people. I'm going here the, the historically, for which came first. So Puna came from there. Puna, Dr. Kansa, who was in 1950. Mein. Pehle kamadi hua karthi, just like finger. I have seen that. We have cultivated that, not seen that. Have and when Puna came again, the rumor started. The, oh, the good quality is not good, etc., etc. But many colleagues say that this was the first green revolution in India, not the green revolution. This one of the first green revolution in India. In 1921, there were cotton committee, I mean, different commodity committee I mentioned earlier. First one came into existence in 1921. It, it, it was so successful. Then the government uh, established very many commodity committee. Dr. Grosa, no major crop is there. Only from wherever they had some commerce interest. All these committee. The last one was established in 1958. It was on spices. Then National Dairy Research Institute established in 1923, initially at Bangalore, and now it is at Karnal, and renamed as NDRI in 1947. Deemed university status in 1989. Now, now many times in ranking, uh, either IER is on top, all these three institutes, IVRA, NDRI, and uh, IERE, they, they, they are on top either this year or that year. Then Central Institute of uh, Cotton Research. Now, at that time, Cotton Committee, when it came to existence, they immediately started a technical laboratory. The name was only technical laboratory in 1924. In 66, this was transferred to ICR and 1991 it was renamed as Central Institute of Research on Cotton Research, CIRCOT. Then Katak, we had famine in 1943. So after aftermath of that, the government of India established uh, in 1946, established by the government of India and transferred to ICR in 2015 and renamed. Now it is known as National. Now there are two rice research institutes. One is a uh, National Research Institute at Kattak, the other one is at Hyderabad. Kher Maya was a first director. He is known for collection of so many very rich land races, 19,000 he collected and preserved at there. He's known for that. Later on, he had difference about the Green Revolution also. That's another story sometime. Other time we will. So that's how here it is a Indian Institute of Sugar Cane Research. It was started in 1952. Indian Council of Sugar Cane Committee, again by some committee. In 1954, it was taken by government of India. In 69, transferred to ICR. Then SAIFI, I have only because this came much later, but because it is a, one of the four deemed university at ICR, so I have included it. This is again an interesting example. One gentleman, I don't know how many of you may have heard his name, the Professor Bosi Sen, he got education from uh, uh, UK or US, I don't know, came back, highly dedicated person, started his own lab at Calcutta in 1936, shifted to Almora. 1959, he was running, doing work on donation and grants. And one of the crop on which uh, this laboratory was working was uh, maize. So I know that uh, uh, quite well. In 1959, they handed over to U, uh, UP government in 1974 to ICR, renamed as Vekanan 
Parvatiya Krishi Anusandhan Sanstan. It, it is renamed in Hindu. And uh, Dr. Jairup and other colleagues from ICR, uh, Dr. J.P. Tandon was first uh, uh, director in 1974. Dr. Jairup, if you remember, he was our professor in Plant Building 401. Then this was one major step, Krishi Vigyan Kendra under uh, uh, this uh, uh, agriculture extension. First one was established in Pondicherry in 1974. And now you can see uh, 731 or different times. And they are connected to 5.4 crore farmers and with different organizations which are there. Uh, uh, now I cannot see the full slide. The large number of, is with, the, uh, maybe I can, if I can put on of this. Ah, I can see. Okay, good. 500 with agriculture universities. ICR institutes only 66, NGOs 103, and some NGOs are working very well. Others we know our, our system, I will not get the comment. Some state governments are also running. Public sector undertaking three, central universities three, and deemed university three and other education suit. So total is 731. I have put here sign of exclamation because the total doesn't come up to 70. It is a 728. Three are the latest one, which I could not find, but I could find the total number. So initially the mandate was only vocational training. Only trainings are there. Then on farm testing that let us test the technology by the extension worker. Then technology assessment refinement, refine the technology also like that, but ultimately they are being realized as single window for agriculture development. At the moment, the mandatory technology assessment demonstration for application and capacity development. The activities are on farm testing, location specificity. Best example in Punjab is Kino. We are growing Kino in Sharpur, we are growing Kino in Abhor, but not in the uh, central Punjab. So there is always location specific. You can count more examples, many examples. Frontline demonstration, capacity building of the farmer, then uh, knowledge and uh, resource center of agriculture technologies okay. and advisories, issuing advisories. And several Af uh, African countries have adopted it. It is now, now, now I, I, I get worried sometimes as a scientist because uh, for extension, all agriculture departments at center and in state agriculture, horticulture, animal husbandry, veterinary department, uh, milk fed, etc. They are there. Before this uh, KVK came, and my, some colleague from KVK must also be there attending, uh, listening to me. Please excuse me, do you know my views? I feel worried that we are now giving most of the money. This agriculture extension is getting largest amount of money. Before this, largest amount in IEC was going to crop sciences. So I feel worried that our emphasis on technology development is being is going down, is being downgraded, and we are going more to extension for which there are large number of government departments. Anyway, now I said that agriculture, uh, this eclipse, all India coordinated search project, first one started in May. It is the big backbone of our search, and now there are 82 search. So now they'll just see the maze one. For major research, India has been. There are five zones. Five zone. This, this number one is a northern Himalaya zone. Number two is northwestern plain zone, Punjab, Haryana, some part of UP. Uh, Delhi is also there. Then this is a northwestern central plain zone, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and then central peninsula zone. So five zones. There are 32 regular centers. Regular center means that 75% of the funds for everything, for faculty, for research, and for non-recurring contingency also, most of non-recurring contingencies coming from ICR, 25% from the state government. A, a very good model, which is operating in the crops. Later on, the voluntary centers also came. Their ICR is giving only some funds for conduct of this search. So total 65 center for me is here we had 32. When I was ADG looking after maize, rice, wheat, etc. Rice is the biggest. We had 52 centers at that time because rice is major crop. In case of uh, wheat, which is second important crop, we had 36. So I don't know what is their present number, but I just took example of this. 69. So zone-wise, 7 in hill zone, 
four in Punjab, Haryana, this northwestern zone, then Middle East, seven, then Pencil, India, nine, then Central Western Plain zone, five total, 32 only, not voluntary or not uh, uh, bifurcated here. Then season wise, we have three seasons for maize. It used to be only grief when I joined as PhD student. Rabbi came in early 70s and late 60s. No one knows I have tried my level best as maize breeder also. It started in South India. It started in Bihar. In Punjab, we started experimentation in 1978. I came back from uh, Germany and we started that. We didn't succeed that, but what we introduced spring maize in Punjab and Anna, now spring maize. There are only five centers working on that. So you can see the expense of coordinating the project of maize, how agriculture research is being conducted. So next comes the Agriculture Scientist Recruitment Board and Research System, established in 1963, restructured in 90. It was part of ICR, but in 2000, it was. Now it has been separated and now it is attached to DARE. And the new service, uh, this agriculture research service came in 1975, as I mentioned earlier also. Then the accreditation board, 1966, and current name, again, it was renamed. I mean, this is the new name. I didn't go into details here. Many times uh, you may be hearing that some universities in Punjab or institutions, colleges, not institutions, they have got accreditation from ICR. But uh, Punjab is not giving. They were all the time blaming one person or another. One of them was myself, who was being blamed. But ICR says very clearly, ICR provide accreditation to agriculture university colleges. ICR accreditation is automatic. And most, uh, it serves only badge of quality. It doesn't give approval to open an institute or a program. This is very important because here, mostly they are opening the institution in agriculture. So it is just mandatory in 2016-17. Now they have, if someone wants to get a grant from uh, ICR for uh, teaching or search, etc., they have to get the institution or college accredited. This is an agriculture research center. It's a wonderful building, wonderful building. This is the guest house. Then there are offices of National Academy of Agriculture Sciences, then offices of the international institution, then museum also, agriculture museum, starting from when the agriculture started, wonderful museum. If you happen to go there, please visit the museum. Then National uh, National Academy of Sciences, one of the youngest academy, came in 1990. Again, Dr. Grover, I was uh, uh, surprised. I saw the document of the academy. It is written, it is vision of uh, BP Val. I only that the FNS at that time, Dr. Pal was there, Dr. Swaminathan was there, others were there. They started this. They had 12 regional chapters. One, cha one center is named at Ludhiana, where Punjab and Machil, Jammu Kashmir, and Chandigarh are there. They named at Ludhiana because when I was director, sir, they made me convener. Then I was uh, vice chancellor. I requested them many times, please change it. I think they will be changing the name. It Ludhiana should not be because there are different uh, uh, states are covered. Then there is forum. Uh, this is a forum for deliberation of important issues, organizing meetings, then uh, uh, giving policy uh, feedback on policy issues. Here, here it is policy inputs, and then accord recognitions. For example, fellowship, which is now most uh, uh, valued in agriculture among agriculture scientists, and also support research prizes also. The, then I thought I should mention the name of some of the director generals. Of course, these two were there when the, the first expansion came during the time of Dr. B.P. Paul and second during the time of Dr. M.S. Swaminathan. I have put the name of Dr. N. Sarandawa. He was PhD alumnus and he was there for five, six years. V.L. Chopra, again Punjabi, and Dr. R.S. Froda. He, he was from HHU, basically from Rajasthan. He, he served for a very long time after Dr. Swaminathan for a very long time. Others were many there. I just put on some of the directors. Now, what happened? Don't worry about first uh, uh, table because other uh, take some time. Just see wheat production. 63-64, 9 million tons. And 67-68, 20 million tons. More than double.
constitution and the turn in 1968 came and the term was given by William Gould. Why I mention this every way, it, it pinches me. I will come later on to this suspect. He was a director of US aid. Now, the uh, institution cannot dwell without support of uh, uh, the leaders. So this is one quote from Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru ji, most things except agriculture can wait. He, he, Bhubaneshwar. Then Mrs. Gandhi, the stamp is of, uh, this is IRE library. And when there was uh, this uh, green revolution, this stamp was issued with Mrs. Gandhi on it. Then we celebrated 50 years. Then Honorable President or His Excellency President at that time, he mentioned two achievements. Two achievements, he mentioned major achievements. Adherence to democratic system from parliament to panchayat and green revolution. So some critic by some of the colleagues that, oh, Green Revolution, not so impressive achievement after 1980s and their technology colleague. So my colleagues, Dr. Jadav, who is at Chodhpur now, his colleague, myself and DGICR, we, we did some analysis because in, it all started from Punjab. I did analysis for Punjab, though I published it later on. So uh, I, I showed it to Dr. Mahapatra and then he said, okay, we should do it at the national level also. So we did two type of things. Uh, simply compared five-year average and then percentage improvement. Then second one is regression. That's so how much gain is there per year. I think most of you being from the uh, uh, engineering side know much better than me about regression. I will not go into detail. We took data for 68 years and uh, divided into four phases. One is pre-green revolution, then green revolution, then post-green revolution, then the second post-green revolution. First, only some percentage improvement, wheat, rice. We took this as base because the uh, criticism is about post-green revolution period. So five-year average, you can see wheat yield. This is yield, absolute. Here, wheat yield. Then sorghum, this is a special case. There was, there, there was I will say, Misdirection. We had a very outstanding person, Dr. NGP Rao, working on it, but somehow, sometime, something happened. Forget about it. May is again criticized, but the gain is higher. Similarly, per the minute, normally you call it Bajra. Again, grain is need is uh, this uh, percentage increases higher, but still, we are all the time talking about wheat and rice. And if you see, uh, rice, um, wheat, major area irrigated, similarly rice, I will not say major, but sizable area irrigated, whereas in case of maize, 60% is rain fed, and per the minute, 90% is rain fed. Even then, you can see the percentage. But coming to regression analysis, which is a more, this is description, what happened, I will not go into detail, simply take the regression. 11 kg increase per year, then here, Second phase, 41 kg, 53, and 36. In the last one, it came down. But here, there is one outlier. There was untimely rains, windstorm, hailstorm. There was a lot of lodging. So we did the analysis without that also. Here is the that uh, uh, outlier. Without that, there is improvement. It is a 40 kg. But still, the, the it has gone down. So as we move up, we expect, because it is biological system, there is a biological limit. It will come down. That has happened more in Punjab because we have gone at much higher level compared to India. And second point, if you see, it, it's particularly important in case of wheat. It is no, not so apparent in uh, uh, other crops. Here, there is distribution is wider. It means yield is varying. The crop was more susceptible to environment. But here, the varieties have come in generally more stable one except for here this year and here two, three years. Now come to rice. Pre-green revolution, 16 kg, 19 kg, 32 and 42 kg. We are make, making more progress. Just see. 
there are different reasons that the time doesn't permit me to go into the reasons. So I can share the uh, this uh, presentation and uh, you can read whosoever is interested later on. Mayors, pre-green revolution, we did better. Here again, some there was misdirection going from hybrid to composites and then to early maturing variety again. Long story I written on that in uh, uh, 2001. Is, there is a paper I will not discuss in that detail. Then we simply worked on the hybrids in which PAU led. I will come to that later on 37 kg and 61 kg. So rate of improvement per year is uh, much higher than wheat and rice now. And uh, here see parliament neglected crop. 4 kg, 6, 7 kg, 19 kg, and 31 kg. Here initially there was a wonderful improvement. See here, here. But later on there are problems because of non immediate disease. It, it created havoc. Then we came over that problem also later on. Dr. Chal was one of the person, Dr. Sarge Chal, who worked on this uh, disease at Ludhiana. So, here you see productivity, which I have yellow marked 1963 to present. But here I want to draw your attention to the bottom. Crop, technology support, policy support, and demand. Wheat and rice have all the things. Short marketing, everything. Maize has no policy support. Demand is partially there, not full. The price come down and pearl milk has only technology so we forget about these things and then say oh this crop we are doing wonders and this crop we are not doing wonders now see here productivity is increasing rate of productivity increases has been generally higher in each phase than the preceding year rate of productivity grain in post may has been higher in some cases so we are Somehow, evergreen revolution is going on, but it is silent. No, we are not recognizing. We will not acknowledge it. We need some William God. And best example, when it comes, it comes soybean. We had only 30,000 pair of soybean in 1970. 1970, 30,000. Now it is 12 million hectare. 400 times increase in the area. Has anybody talked about it? And one of the persons who are responsible for this was Dr. Karl Katsa. I wrote one in the interview about that, that he was one of the persons. He carried a seed from Punjab, Punjab at the Punjab selection one. When I came to the 1990, when I went to YCR, I saw this seed demand. Punjab selection one was there. And Jaru, it was right well with Dr. K.B. Singh. You may be remembering him who taught us PB plant 501. So nobody recognizes it. We need somebody else to tell us that we are doing good thing. That, that is pity. Let me say this in Punjabi. I hope you also understand Punjabi, even though you are from Fayana. So otherwise, we, we, we will not recognize that someone is doing good work. No. Just see where we are now. These are the figures for 1950 and 19, uh, uh, 20, 1920. And on this, here is the percentage increase. Just see how much is there. We are number two in rice and number two in wheat, number one in China in both crops, number one in pulses, number one in horticulture, number one in max, not in, uh, number one in milk, not in case of uh, uh, milk and egg, but we have made tremendous progress, particularly in fishery, et cetera. Here are the sources of data. Not only this, during this year, the news came about, I think, uh, 10 days back or two weeks back. The nation achieved record of export, US 50 million it, of agricultural commodities such as rice. Rice is number one. Number two is buffalo meat. Not meat, buffalo meat. Then wheat, sugarcane, et cetera. So we become important partner in world's food and nutrition security, and now it is going to increase. In today's newspaper, wheat export uh, for Egypt is news are there on that. So what has happened? ICR efforts or NARS efforts from food grain shortage to um, uh, and import to self-sufficiency and exports. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, let me take one minute more here. In 1962, 
1965 after the war shri lal bahadur shastri ji said that on monday evening all restaurants will be closed and in february 1966 critically from those who are from punjab must be knowing most popular punjabi magazine published by sardar professor gurbakhsh singh pritlari 1962 one full page advertisement in punjabi by government of india please eat two fulkas instead of three because we have to import otherwise yes uh, wheat anyway from subsistence farming to intensive technology led farming front ranking producer and led many green revolution white i cannot go into detail and probably i say that we are continuing green revolution or evergreen revolution whatever we want to say now little bit about pau we started from one of those six uh, agriculture colleges lalpur it came to college of agriculture initially it came to khalsa college then it came to ludhiana then university was established in 1962 and 1970 uh, uh, initially ludhiana uh, ludhiana and pu and hu bifurcated then after some months palampur also went to himachal pradesh and 2006 PAUN Gurungade University Veterinary University so now we are family of four universities you can say that mother is ludhiana three pandit jawarla nehru came ji for formal uh, inauguration act was passed in 1963 but we say that university was established in 1962 so uh, all dates are there now our presence throughout punjab Unlike other universities, eight research stations in different places, three fruit research stations, Shiv Gyan Kendra, and Farm Dairy Research Ski. In fact, thirty-one uh, KVKs. So some of the districts don't have, but some K districts have two KVKs. In Punjab, all twenty-two districts have KVKs, but three are with. Gurungade University and one is with Sifat at Abur. Sifat is Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering Technology uh, of uh, uh, ICR. We use first landmark variety, hybrid bajra, first grain permit hybrid in the world. In the world, oh, it's 1965. Sorry, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. It is 1965. I cannot correct now. 1965. This is the first. it was uh, bred in collaboration university of georgia tifton then green revolution started pv18 again first semi dwarf variety dwelt by pju dinesh and other colleagues from icr icr came into picture later on and uh, and, and i was student at the first year we planted this we planted this then it 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 was red color Green was not that good. You formed the amber. Formed the amber. Then came Kalyan in 1967, first amber-colored variety, yes, and it is Kalyan is named after name of Dr. D. S. Patel, who also developed hybrid bajra. I will come to that later on. So P. A. U. named it as Kalyan, but the ultimate name is Kalyan Sona 227 because I. A. E. R. I. and Panth Nagar they were also working on it. But here again in distribution of seed pau took lead because dr tawal went to the whole spiti law spiti at that time was with pau we have he multiplied the seed so we had much more seed than other institutions than ira or pantnagar i i don't know why pantnagar had to be at that time they, but they, then coming to rice the green revolution expanded it IRA it was introduced in 90 uh, uh, 1965 it, it is a variety directly it was introduced whereas pv this was not it was planted in 400 acres first year not even single acre flowered because it was long duration it filled but then next year uh, the sowing time was advanced transplanting time but Then PAU came up with PG PR one zero six, which was on the top in Punjab and Haryana. In Punjab, I don't know about Haryana, 
uh, detail. But in Punjab, this was Nambura Novarati up to 1996. In 97, uh, this one and uh, Pusa, they became, uh, they were on level ground, Pusa 44. After that, for many years, Pusa 44 became number one. Now this variety is not under cultivation. It is not only variety. There are other things also. Normally, I am plant breeders in access, we get the credit. But others also did very important work. Sowing date and depth in case of wheat. Wheat, plumule of these uh, Mexican wheats were very small. Germination was very poor first year. First irrigation was advanced, crown root initiation. Had thresher not come, we would not have been able to carry wheat uh, produce to the houses. Monsoon would have come and people could not have date of nursery swing and transplanting age of nursery then here weed control is a major problem 1975 first herbicide came i mean pu recommended but for in both crops higher nitrogen level fertile air irrigation schedule changed and uh, i will come to this point later on insecticide expansion of mechanization was there with increased cropping intensity, insecticide use in, came in rice and fungicide use came in wheat. You see, initially there was no insecticide requirement. They say Green Revolution brought insecticides. Fungicide use was there for seed treatment. No insecticide use. Not at all. We decide came in 1975. So we just, with our closed mind and closed eyes, just now, even now, the most insecticides used in cotton, not in wheat and rice. Plus, Ludhiana, I PA you have advantage. My colleagues from, uh, uh, they, they may not be anybody from Pantanagar, but from IRA or uh, from uh, ICR. We had advantage because at that time, IADP, Intensive Agriculture District Program, was there in Ludhiana. There was wonderful collaboration between PAU and Department of Agriculture. And this IADP workshop, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dehru, it is same workshop, it's now PAU workshop. And BDO offices even now in uh, PAU. Of course, now they don't deal with agriculture, now they deal with the rural development. So that was the integration also between different institutions, which gave lead to Punjab. Later on, many land mark variety came. I will not go into detail, but I will just mention them. Maybe there's something special. This variety became this again. From 1995 to 2005, it was number one from Amritsar to Calcutta, I will say. This variety dominated. At the moment, this one is now, now varieties from Pusa Institute are on the top. Two varieties are on the top. Then, in, in case of rice, now PR 121 is number one, and number two is PR 126. This is which dominated. That takes 130 days. This takes 100 days. Problem. Again, the 76 first early maturing variety, which brought spring maize. Of course, we also did the experiment, but it started more with the farmer rather than the bee. This is first single cross hybrid. I told you earlier about cross uh, hybrid breeding. First uh, single cross hybrid bred in Punjab in case of maize. With this, the breeding program in Indian level, it changed. Single crop, I will go in, uh, I cannot go in detail what is single cross out. Yeah, those who are coming from Bhutinda district. Earlier, SS used to be the main variety, released in 1928, dominated for 40, 50 years. But we could not take cotton crop, only one crop a year, or after that, barley, etc. This was released in 1976 in cotton. It allowed, it with this in the cotton belt, double cropping system started. Cotton wheat system, F is for free coat. So, double crop system, this is a landmark variety again. Then, BT1, first variety which came, GM crop variety in India is gained in cotton from PU. It didn't succeed because of pink ballworm, but pink ballworm came later on. COG64 again, landmark variety in case of sugarcane, again, this is 1976. Again, the 76 in 76, F404 in 76, COG64. 64 and 6, it dominated Punjab and Western UP for many years, many, many years. This is one recent one, Gobi Sharsan. It is now under cultivation from Pathan Kho to Bor. Very good variety. Then SML668. This is summer moon, spring moon. It 
what was that? This is the most common variety. It was G65, Gurdas was 65, matured in 65 days. Again, a story behind that release. I don't have time for that. Even that three cropping system started, it, mostly with the potato, potato and uh, wheat and summer move, etc. This is the most important for Saturday time. Then Punjab hybrid, first hybrid in case of vegetable. Then CH3 chili, very important. It dominated for 20 years or so. Now we are C27. This is <coughs> wonderful variety of Punjab Shohara. It can be transported. Here I have put in a red. Those who are aware of Hino, one of the uh, uh, input we were getting that oh, it has many, if you see the seeds here, average is 21. We started work on uh, 2006 and came up with, now it has three seeds. Wonderful variety, sooner or later. We started distributing its uh, plantlets uh, uh, three years back or four years back. And uh, now we have done survey, Dr. Harminder Singh, he did that survey, he was at that point at the time. He is very happy with the performance at farmer field. So this is going to be future of Kino cultivation, which is number one fruit crop in Punjab. Now I talked about technology, that's sort of dummy thresher, which came in late 69, uh, late 60s. We purchased, I mean, my parent purchased 1969. It came about one year earlier. Laser levels, you must have heard about it. Very good. Now, most popular machine for leveling the land. This is a multi-purpose seed drill. All, all planting is of it is done by seed drill. Then high clearance spare in case of sugar cane. When there was shoot fly, we developed it. Then happy seeder for sowing of wheat. For managing of pedistra, you might be hearing a lot about pedistra management, etc. Dr. Uh, Grover, please uh, just remind me about time. I think I have lost the... Uh, I, I can just sum up within five minutes when you want me to do that. And uh, then a straw management system, again, for paddy. After harvesting wheat, it, it uh, just spreads the straw. And you must be hearing nowadays in uh, newspaper DSR, direct seed rice to save water. This is the drill for that. Wonderful equipment. Then this is those who are interested in rooftop vegetables, etc. Solar pump support, drip irrigation, biofertilizers. We have done extremely good work in the last uh, few years. Then two other allied disciplines, beekeeping. PAU imported uh, Italian bee in 1962, and government was very, very critical of it. They didn't allow it. Up to 1975, they allowed in 1975 that we can carry it out, and now it has revolutionized uh, beekeeping in India. And this is one very promising. We have very good central PAU. Carry any production here? We are either number one, number two, or number three in different years. Then, uh, though I always even now feel that uh, universities are institution higher learning. But then because of some decision taken at the government level and some convincing by the then chief minister, we had skill development center also. It is doing exceedingly well in the capacity building of the farmers and monitoring, mentoring the agri-start system. It came in 2015. Ah, This is one land uh, mark again. PHU started in 1967. I don't know if you can see the upper part of it or not. I don't know, something is wrong with my slides in the whole show. When I was seeing, it was okay. Now something is happening. No, we, so, are able to, we are able to oh, see it. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. So we started it, and then we didn't have any proper ground, etc. And you can just see, this is a teacher's home, if someone of you have visited and stayed there. Teacher's home and a ground near that. How they came in 1960s, from Punjab, from Machar Pradesh, from UP, from Rajasthan, or of course from Haryana. I should first mention Haryana because Haryana and Punjab. UP farm. He uh, taught, uh, uh, learned Punjabi and taught Gurmukhi to his granddaughter so that he could read the PAU magazine. So that. then this is the seed sale on the left side. This is old one. This is new one. It is colored. You can see. And see how they are sitting at one place. We have one pandal. 
now we have very good building wonderful building um, built four years back and uh, someone i think some politician is there maybe agriculture minister then listening to him just see how attentive they are and the farmer sitting with seat yes you can see then punjab agriculture some perception some reality check as the, some criticism green revolution there here also many criticism both these uh, these uh, are these like these slides are based on uh, published information i can provide if someone wants the uh, the issues are stagnating productive major crops groundwater depletion yes i agree soil health hazard fertilizer use discriminatory use of pesticide it was there toxic level were there not now residue management it is still but it is manageable it is only now i will say other issues are declining of farm income all green i don't agree so it is whether it is 6 or it is 9 that is the question let us see the data here uh, one year data doesn't mean anything so we have taken 60 61 as bit and then again not all decade data are there for all decade but we didn't present in the publication 80s 90s you can see wheat is increasing so during last decade five quintal increase so what else do we want we have gone from 12 tons to 51 51 is the highest uh, figure it will come in some slide and from 15 per mil because at that time it was more formal basmati was not much we have gone up to 69 here also we are going up and the basmati area was only 6% in this decade and now it is 20% because of exports even then the yield is going up just see in spite of so much increase in basmati basmati yield is nearly 50% of the formal or 60% of the formal still Three quintal increases there. If we remove basmati, then yield is going up. Maize seven quintal yield during last two years increase. Cotton, of course, we had problem, white fly problem, so yield went down. But if we exclude that year, then there is slight improvement. Sugar cane more than seven quintal increase. What else do we want? How how is there stagnation? What has happened? That rate of growth has decreased because we are moving up, up, up. Yield is moving up, and we have biological limit. And where, as we move up, then nutrition will also be there. More nutrition has to be there. But I will come to use of fertilizer in next slide. Soil, this is soil. Increasing, just see ninety eighty, one lakh seventy two thousand samples. Then ninety decade, one lakh eight thousand samples. Then next decade fifty thousand samples. Next decade fifty number of samples have decreased because number of KV cases and other labs have come. Earlier PAU lab was dominating, but we have taken data only from PAU lab because if you mix data from other places, then there is something always there some variation lab to lab. You know better than me. Now there are three classes: low organic carbon, it is less than zero point four, medium zero point four to zero point seven five, and high more than zero point seven five. So. Seventy-eight percent was low, and only one percent was high. So slowly and slowly, low is decreasing. Medium increased from twenty-one fifty-five percent sample showed medium increase, and from one forty percent more. You will ask me why? Two reasons: because of more intensive agriculture, more root uh, mass is being left. Second is cover crop, spring maize, summer moong. To some extent, uh, sunflower, then fodders. These are being grown during hot summer season when the, all the organic carbon used to be degraded. So that may be the reason. Fertilizer use during this decade, yes, it was increasing, but this decade we have been able to control uh, all creating awareness. So we have also, but when we have higher yield, we need more fertilizer dose. If I am working hard. I need more tea at least. I need more tea at least. Pesticide use. Yeah, this is the where again it is. It is needed a different lecture about GM crops. But here when P B B T was introduced, you can see this is total uh, pesticide and red one is uh, insecticide. That uh, insecticide. 
Yeah, this is pesticide residue. Many people say that we eat poison. Yeah, it was a very bad situation here in the beginning. This green is safe, non-contaminated. This is contaminated, but within the limits. And this is uh, uh, this is red is contaminated, burned limit. So this was the here again. Only seven eight percent here again seven eight percent are safe. Here it is only four and seven. So they, they mostly, but this was the worst ninety decade. Forty four percent were above the limit, but see how much we have improved. Now ninety just the reverse. Ninety two were contaminated. Now ninety two are safe, totally free. And here forty four percent had insecticide above the limit. Now we have only one point four, but this one point four is also dangerous. Certain insecticides are being used, overused, misused, you may use any term in certain pockets. I will not mention those, but this is mainly many vegetables. Then uh, this is a product. They say that Madhya Pradesh is going, doing wonderful. UP is a higher yield in case of rice. Bihar is doing well in, you see here, Bihar wheat yield is also. But we were at that level in 1981-82. And now we have gone up to 58. Ah, 51. And uh, in case of rice, we are at that level in 85, 86. Uh, rice is 77, 70, 78. And this is now the difference is earlier I was presenting paddy data, 69. And uh, shelled rice. That's a how much time do we have? I have. I can go fast. Hello. Anyway, then I'm going. So here is the three in uh, three times survey on income from agriculture, NSSO, NAVAD, NSSO. We are on the top. We are number one. Haryana is number two, and difference is almost stable, four thousand, four to five thousand, four thousand, and India this level. Where is Khadi Sankat? Sankat is due to some other problems in this society. Agriculture and PAU just being blamed. Kethi Sankat, Kethi Sankat, every day in Punjabi newspapers. But there are okay. challenges. Okay. Can challenges. you conclude now? Uh, five minutes. Okay. Ah, yeah, I, I will. So the, these are the challenges. But this is real challenge and challenge is also water here and crop rise due management. Uh, PAU, we got the first best institution award again in 2017. We got it. Uh, we got first institute to get special grant was in the Institute of Sciences, Bangalore, 50 crores. Next year, we got 100 crores. We are the first university, first institution. And University of uh, Mumbai, uh, Madras, and Calcutta, they all got 50 crores. We got 100 crores. We are the first university to get that. This is our ranking. If you consider all above us are sometime NDRA, Karnal, IERI, or Izzatnagar, Vet Institute, here we are first. Here we are first, here we are second. Gurungudej University was number one. Here, Pantanagar is number one. Here, the certificates. I will be very fast. Yeah, now. Today, the, I will say most precisely, they recognize as icons of modern India. They recognize only one icon in agriculture. And we are introduced as institution of excellence by institution. I don't know. We were among that shortlisted team. We were ICR and PAU. Then we are number one position. Yeah, all colleagues, even myself, I had the impression that uh, IER is uh, number one in terms of variety development. But uh, Indian Society of uh, Genetics and plant breeding did something else in 2016. To my surprise, utter surprise, and uh, thank God I was vice chancellor at that time. PA was number one, pump number two. And recently, we also got an award from ICR for clean uh, uh, campus. Real distinction I think we are the only university to have produced three director general, three different councils ICR, CSIR, and forestry. And we produce three hockey Olympians. Then also a lady uh, member. Then many Punjabi literate. Now we are Sajid Patra. Then our silver jubilee, 
celebrations. Then I must mention names of the pioneers. Sir Subramaniam, largest seed import even up to today of Mexican war feeds. Then B.P. Paul, I think I said something about him, but here there are something. He was either in IRE or in NBP, uh, or in ICR when the Green Revolution occurred, but he was not given credit to that. I don't know why, but when I read, Dr. Grover, I got this information from you, what Borlock said. He said, you are the architect of Indian Green Revolution. Then he willed his property, including two houses, to at Delhi and Shimla to IRE. That is the dedication. And he belonged to Punjab. Then, uh, of course, Norman Borlaug, uh, uh, I will, he, Green Revolution, he, he introduced the world food prize because there is no food, pri uh, food prize or agriculture prize, Nobel Prize. So he got Nobel uh, uh, Prize in peace. So he introduced this. It is considered equivalent to Nobel Prize. And then now India, we have Borlaug Institute in South Asia. So most well-known agriculture scientist, uh, I will say main architect, some say father, I don't know. But this is a... Uh, uh, and Dr. Swaminathan, a great deal of the credit must go to you for first recognizing the potential of... He doesn't mention him as main architect. But he was a great person. Time magazine identified 20% throughout the world, more influ most influential. There are three Indian, Mahatma Gandhi ji, Tagore ji, and Dr. Swaminathan. These are the other things. I will just leave that. Those. Uh, he was selected in IPS. He didn't, he didn't go there. And he was first Asian DG of CG Institute, first one to get food prize. So then I say that he was free, uh, father of Green Revolution in Punjab. People may agree, may not agree. He was, I will say, most outstanding scientist PAU head. He, he developed this hybrid bajra also. And Dr. those from CSRI system, he was one of the two PAU scientists who got Shanti Supertanakar Award. Otherwise, we have many Rafi and the Kuraji Award, which we consider number one in agriculture. And I, I said that uh, this is my world when he expired, remain unsurpassable till date. We have International Science Center in this. Then Beecher, again, about rice, we know a lot about uh, Dr. Khosh, Indian PAU alumnus, but the first variety was developed by him. That's enough, I would say. So Dr. Khosh, IR64, most widely cultivated variety, luminous of PAU, was at IRI for 35 years. And this is the welding of Dr. Cantrell, DG IRI. While his name may have passed the lips of many, his life work passed the lips of almost half of the mankind. What he means that the variety developed by him, their producers being taken by half of the world. Then I must make mention of first two vice chancellor of PSU. Very strict, very hard taskmaster. I have written here. Then of course, Dr. Emerson Lava. Again, many things about. So seven persons who have got uh, Nobel, uh, this uh, food prize. Again, courtesy Dr. Grover. I got it from him, but I have mentioned Dr. Khushis PSU Lunas, Dr. Rathanai PSU Lunas, Dr. S.K. Vaslu worked on maize. I happen to work with him. He's from Khalsa Khalja Marsal. Ah, this slide, if you want, you can see the returns in terms of uh, rural income of poverty reduction. Agriculture research is uh, much higher above education and health. And here also, not only in India, but in other countries also. Then acknowledgement, Dr. Grover, first to you for motivation, for providing me a lot of information. Dr. Riyad made many slides for PAU. Rajbir, I got slides and other information from uh, him about ICR, Dr. O.P. Jadav also from ICR system, Dr. Sujay Raksha, all three please provided me the information from Punjab. Dr. N. Asmias from PAU got a lot of information. Udhat Jain helped me in preparing the presentation and numerous, it's difficult to name all. Thank you all. Thank you for patience. Must be very patient. I may have taken much more time than allocated to me. I was just waiting for a signal from Dr. Grover. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Professor Brillo. What a scintillating lecture you gave. And you really fulfilled that BP Paul saying that you know, it's not the education for, it's not the 
education of agriculture, but the education for agriculture that the nation needs. So to the non-agriculturalist, to the academia at large, your lecture is something which every Indian academician must listen to, to get a comprehension of what agricultural education and research means to the nation. You know, no wonder the British kept this separate and rest of the research separate. You exemplified by your lecture why all this is so important. But thank you very much. I knew very little of it by just reading through the Wikipedia. But today after your lecture, I have a better comprehension and I will, this will motivate me to do a self-study a little more than what I have done so far. So I have used my prerogative to say all these things and now I invite questions from the audience and Professor Dello, uh, I hope he would respond to the queries from the audience. I'm told Professor Kohli wanted to have a go first. So I <laughs> invite Professor Kohli, who is the chairman of our Chandigarh chapter of NASI to interact with you first. Professor Kohli, uh, please. Thank you, uh, President Gober. Uh, you have rightly said that uh, very nice, very educative lecture from Professor Dillon, uh, right, starting from the history of agriculture in India and the support of the government and exemplary, you know, contribution of PAU. Uh, but some of my questions that were doing in my mind were that uh, about the quality of food grains. See, uh, whenever we try to go for wheat, the first thing we get that if you want desi wheat, which is good in taste, good in color and structure, and we have to go for Madhya Pradesh wheat, which is very expensive. Then second thing which was what grew in my mind is that uh, we learned that food saved is food grown. About 30%, more than 30%, the literature says, our food grains, they are spoiled to rodents and fungus every year. It is, it is very painful. About, you know, so much of inputs are going in the farmland and about one third of it goes waste. It is a very major loss. This is the second point that comes to my mind. Third is that recently we had witnessed this farm farmers agitation. I believe I, I, I was looking towards IARI in Delhi or to PAU or Fezabad. The agricultural institutions, they could be coming forward. Maybe they, they have been, I, 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 I am ignorant. But from the newspapers, what I used to read and discuss, it was, it was necessary that those who are producing, those who are guiding the production of the farmers, they should educate the government. They should educate the government or even to the farmers. I am not, you know, siding with any side. But at that time, it, these things were, you know, brewing in my mind that we have so much of intelligentsia in our agricultural institutions. And the government has to be well-meaning. All the farmers, they have to be well-meaning. So this is the third point. And the fourth is that in all these agricultural institutions, the ecological concerns are being missed. These are very important concerns. You know, look at the water table in Punjab, which is going low year after year. And if you look at the literature, it says that the desertification all those processes 
that lead to formation or conversion of an agricultural arable land to a desert. These desertification in India is at the top in the world. You know, I am repeating this word. This is UNDP data. We are at the top in the world on desertification and equal to Bangladesh. And when I look at uh, India, in Punjab, the situation is very alarming. The amount of water which we are using for agriculture, you know, the ecological concerns that, that, that are more important for me. We always talk of appreciate and large number of clappings that we, we can't ignore. But the thing is where we are heading towards the desertification in Punjab which we always boast of saying that five people Punjab. Still, the land which are going non-productive, focus has to be diverted towards this growing major problem. And then another thing, what was the fourth or fifth point is, there is no concern about the latest trends of GM crops. Are these good, are these bad? We, as ecologists, we have our own opinion, which opinion may not be good in terms of productivity. You know, there's uh, organic food, organic, you know, these things, which we always feel concerned. So these issues, I believe that these issues should be addressed by none other than the scientists in these institutions or ICAR or IARI, then the production of uh, you know, ARS, Agricultural Research Services. The other day I was in Karnal and uh, I was having a meeting with the chairman of this ARS and they said that the level of people who are coming out for these ARS, these agricultural research services, that is going too low. And there are only four or five institutions in the country which are able to produce ARS people. So this is, these are the concerns that was brewing in my mind when Dr. Tharamvil asked me, okay, Dr. Goli, would you like to say something? I said, I have such concerns. Otherwise, the point of view in which Dr. Dillo has talked about, and the theme was it, he has justified the theme. But these concerns, I wish, Dr. Dillon, if you can educate us on such issues. Sure, sure, sure. Please, so sir. before Professor Dillon responds, may I just ask Mahipal whether there are comments on the Facebook and so on? you, and you wish, if there can be other questions also, I think ah, I can take yeah. uh, All of them together. So, yeah, Mahipal, are there things? Uh, but if you wish otherwise, I can do that. Uh, sir, there is a question from Simpi Malik also. Uh, Simpi, please, please read out. Please read out. Uh, Simpi, please. Uh, Hello, there is a uh, yes, ma'am. Thanks a lot <laughs> for the opportunity, ma'am. Uh, sir, I have a question from Professor B.S. Dillo, the Vice Chancellor of PAU. Uh, sir, as I have done my postgraduate in, in physics from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and also a project on nanomaterials under the esteemed guidance of Professor Kya Dharamveer. But now I want to pursue my research in PAU. So can you enlighten me on the collaboration of physics and agriculture for research and scope for me in PAU for research? Okay, any, is there anything else, Rajni in the Facebook? No, no, sir. There are uh, no questions. Question. There is nothing else in chat box. There are appreciations, but no question. Okay. So then let me go back to Professor Dillo to respond to what Professor Kohli said and whether he has an advice to give to this um, young okay. physics uh, PhD. 
Yeah, I will. I will start with the easier one. Malik said in in nano or physics. Yes, ma'am. We are collaborating, and I have told very clearly PAU as well as ICR that future lies in collaboration engineering institutions. We are moving towards smart agriculture, etc. I don't know how far it will be applicable at the farmer level, but we should be ready. So that way, uh, if you give me the exact details, etc. In fact, for collaboration, I visited uh, uh, IIT Roper personally. Then uh, thereafter, Dean College of Engineering, he is in regular contact with IIT. I visited Pekka at this uh, uh, Thapar also, just to build this collaboration. Physics or engineering and uh, agriculture must marry. Punjab could make progress because of mechanization, but we are doing farm mechanization. Now we have to, we are working on nano. We have established a center and we had a petition of professor also before I left about uh, four or five months back. I want to let the next vice chancellor uh, do the selection, etc. But some of that has been delayed. Uh, my mail is there, or I can, you can get mail. Or, I mean, you can ask me specific something what you want, but collaboration is there. She can, she yeah. can contact the soil department there. She yes. can send no, me a mail, I, and I'll... We have separate nano section now. Mm -hmm. We have well-equipped, well-equipped, we call it... No, as, a, as a physicist, as a physicist, her utility will be more with the soil department. Soil oh, also, okay. even lots of uh, food, uh, this wrapping, etc. Uh -huh. oh, that also. And we are working on fertilizers. We are working on uh, this uh, storage, food storage. We start working on pesticides. We are working on pesticide also. And then there is one institute, I think, uh, uh, chemical formulation, something like that, at Delhi. Uh, we called leaves from there. They said, please don't work yeah. on pesticide. You're not really able to register. It is so difficult. So then we stop because. Now to Dr. Kohli. Dr. Kohli, sir, you have raised a very important and very question, uh, important and relevant question, which disturb us all. I will go one by one. First is quality of grain. I agree. Those from genetics, and we understand that if you increase one thing, it is at the cost of some other. So we increased yield at the cost of a little bit of quality. To such an extent that now quality is better. 343, which I said that dominated from 95 to 2006, that quality was very bad. But problem is that in Punjab, Nobody is listening to us. Yeah. We had a variety, PBW660. Three years, I think, were this is 19, uh, 2013 or 14. Uh, maybe 13. I, I, it was uh, two, three years after I joined. We could not sell the seed. Because uh, the yield is little less. Two quintal, three quintal. Nobody. So, but now PBW1, zinc. High zinc. It is doing reasonably well. Some air is coming up. Only a thing where there is a premium for quality is basmati. Their area is increasing. Unless and until there is some premium for quality. Uh, uh, I am from farming family. I am a farmer and a scientist. Ka. As a farmer, I am a scientist. और सोचता हूं क्यों मेरे भाई सारे रिश्तेदार खेती करते हैं अब क्या हो रहा है इवन द क्वालिटी इज फॉर इस बार तो इट इज जस्ट नेचुरल समथिंग दैट इज व्हाई देयर इज श्रंक ऑन ग्रेन अगर काला भी ग्रेन ब्लैकनिंग हो जाए ड्यू टू वन टाइम दी रेंज और हेल स्टोर इवन देन द गवर्नमेंट हैज टू पिक अप बिकॉज़ इट इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर वोट दैट इम बी वेरी फ्रेंक or it is required for national public distribution. Unless and until there is a premium for quality in Punjab, we cannot, uh, we, we are doing breeding for quality, but farmer will not come for it. They will simply harvest, put in the trolley, and carry it to. That is the reason. Otherwise, let me tell you, the best quality variety is C306 released in PAU by Dr. Ram Tan Singh, the giant at that time. And that is it is a tall variety, it is pre-Mexican variety. So we feel proud in that. So that is 
by your answer on this answer there is some premium for quality we cannot uh, waste it yeah here first thing is that the latest estimate of sifat uh, central institute of post harvest engineer technology icr they say 18% people say 30 to 40% also but on the whole they have come down to 18% 18 and in case of uh, Uh, food grains etc they say only 8% more in the case of vegetable and fruits for that what's more important is infrastructure marketing infrastructure there is no technology for storage etc which is not available we have to adopt that and we are very good repeater and very good adopters indian scientists excuse me uh, that's why i feel i wish i am wrong we are poor thinker very good repeater very good doctors so absolutely no problem the the problem there is of infrastructure now third question was uh, uh, newspapers and uh, government uh, creating uh, awareness among the government and uh, masses i will tell you some anecdotes there was a major investment somewhat at chapparchidi maybe some of the these might have uh, attended that but i don't know how many attended agriculture session the last session i was also one of the speaker but before me were dr kalkar and dr kush we all the three said please stop this electricity supply free of cost it must be we are not saying stop subsidy we are saying rational subsidy yeah yeah let's say from exploitation of natural resources to conservation of natural resources let the farmer continue same subsidy let the farmer uh, continue increase subsidy as it is increasing in the previous years also but at the end uh, the honorable gentleman who was to speak at the end he said no do ye to aise chalega this is one anecdote second anecdote is uh, that in 1900 uh, 2008 there was ordinance on uh, conservation of subsoil water 2009 there was act it was implemented very good in 2014 there were elections so farmers started transplanting early in 2015 we had wheat fly and 16 i was given charge to see that uh, wheat uh, fly management i extensively told people started transplanting the date was 15th june they started in the beginning or even late may i asked them they said minister sahab ne kya kar lo exact so unless and until we are disciplined law abiding and careful who doesn't know this 2000 report even now my right up is lying with the tribune may be this week or next week how to save water but because uh, it is free for all when on jitni der tak electricity free hai farmer will not listen to us और जितनी देर तक डेमोक्रेसी हुई है वंडरफुल डेमोक्रेसी बट नॉट एज मच्योर एज वेस्टर्न कंट्री सम ऑफ द वेस्टर्न कंट्री सो व्हाट व्हाट वी हैव डन इज दैट वी हैव स्टॉप्ड सीड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ इन 2013 14 वी स्टॉप सीड प्रोडक्शन लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन वैरायटी 118 सेकंड लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन वी स्टॉप सीड प्रोडक्शन 2 3 इयर्स लेटर नाउ फॉर लास्ट 4 5 इयर्स वी से नथिंग मोर लॉन्गर देन PBW 121, which is number one variety at that time, it matures in 110 days after transplanting. So nothing. Secondly, laser level uh, laser level 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 but there is need of uh, some sort of discipline we, we should if we have an act we should implement it if some decision is taken so maybe we we will learn otherwise 2017 report says that uh, uh, 25 years the, the, the present jo yahan se pani aata hai wo khatam ho jayega so that is about uh, about ecology concern of water table that is covered we are worried about ecology yeah uh, i i have that i i can show you sometime i have slide also in 1978 you know a little bit about pau dr as atwal entomologist he was dean 
he made a presentation in a symposium. It is listed, it is printed that we are moving in the wrong direction. In 1991, PAU published a booklet, Dr. Prehar from Soil Science is number one author, SDK from engineering is number two, author by six percent there. That, that booklet is there. So PAU has been doing its duty. So many diversification committees have been, latest one I was the chairman, that report is also lying there because one of the component is uh, that we should must charge something on electricity supply. So nothing is being, uh, there is no progress, I, I will say that. So not that we are not concerned. We are really concerned about overuse. I, I, I use the term misuse overuse for pesticides. Even urea also is being used more, but uh, we are trying to create, uh, there, there is impact because urea is valued. Pesticide, there is an impact because again, it is valued, it's not free, unlike uh, other thing. So really, our future, uh, if, if, when they come, uh, the article on water conservation, you read the last two sentences. It is not the next generation. After 17 years, 20 years, 25 years, they will in 50s. Where will the water? So present generation, that is the sentence I write. Then uh, uh, fifth one, you said no concern for good or bad. What was that? Ah, but it's about GM. GM or uh, we should not put all GM together. That, that's one. Yeah, cotton was very good choice, but it is producing talks. So that it was not good choice. It was good choice because it is not good. From maize to rice or maize to wheat, vitamin A gene is there. There can be Transfer gene for drought tolerance from all summer crops, there is drought tolerance is there. So what sort of gene is there? What is the origin of gene? Sir, there, is a, there is a need for policy decision on it because the uh, Cartagena protocol says that wherever there is a region of a variety, there GM crops should not be allowed. And the government is all confused. On one side is the money and the you know uh, big uh, uh, GM crop producer uh, people, those who sell seeds. On the other is our practices. Whom to look for for these okay. uh, you know uh, you know guidance to the government? We are not telling, but uh, it all depends on. Now let me tell you, what sort of gene source of gene? What is product of gene? If it is vitamin A, it is not toxin. If it drought tolerance, it is not toxin. But we are putting all, all GM together. Then the fact on the environment also. It may be vitamin A, but what is microflora, microfauna, how it is being affected? How the soil, in, in case of Bt, cotton, there's a lot of uh, this toxin is going, is in the roots also, going into the soil yes, also. Yes, yes, yes. So, so these things, this has to be looked into. Uh, so No, uh, people have looked into it. Even you so know. Cartagena you know, protocol. If you ask me, I always say that number one, cotton was very good from that angle. We should not, in fact, let me about BT cotton, uh, BT when I was ADG, BT brinjal and BT tomato. One scientist was working, he showed me, I wrote on, help me stop it because these are eaten raw. These are eaten raw and we are putting again BT gene there. Mm. Same gene, cry one AC. So there should be there should be good choice. Last, I, if you ask me how sugar can we have sugar yeah. production, but sugar can we have a, a germ plasm? There has been internal quarantine. Lot of germ what the cartilagin protocol you are talking about. We have wonderful germ plasm in Northeast India. So there has to be internal quarantine in case of sugar cane. In yes, case sugar, of cane, means, sugar cane, we should not ever go for uh, GM sugar cane. We have very good gene pool with, uh, with us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, they, if we have to go, then it, they, there should be internal yeah. quarantine. In Punjab, mm -hmm. there is no problem. But that internal quarantine, how much we will be able to... Actually, can we continue this at some other forum now? All right, all right. All right. Uh, just that's a one minute about ARS also. Again, ARS, who is... I pursued with ICR for the council. I didn't succeed Then pursued in Punjab. I succeeded 114 colleges and universities giving BSc degree. Some universities enrollment is 900, another university 300. 
most of the colleges 80 to 60, let us say 60, 60 multiplied by 114. How many students are we admitting? And when Punjab Council came into existence and uh, we started checking, only six could get approval. So how we are producing so ARS, how from PAUP, not, they are not going because they are getting We are a very poor presentation in ARS. So PAU or ICR is not responsible. It is the policy that everybody is being allowed to get BSc degree. So in Punjab, food storage, Nasa, food storage ke liye kuch karo. what to do for the food storage, grain storage? Grain storage, that's our technology is there. Technology mein koi itni baat nahi hai. And we but can so have... What I read, about 30%, uh, they say more than 30% goes waste. Yeah, I told you that latest figure is 18%, and if you <laughs> talk only of uh, cereals, it is 8%. But but 18 is also very high. I agree with you. So sometimes exhalation is itni hai na. Kahi baar kya thay ki itni silain soil hai, itni desert soil hai, itni achhi soil hai, itni road. Sir, मुझे तो ना मुझे तो ना इतना तरस आता है किसानों के ऊपर. जितना वो इनपुट जितना है उसके हिसाब से आउटपुट है नहीं उनके पास. So may I propose that we conclude this session here by once again thanking Professor Kuldev Singh Dillo for providing us a food for thought and for educating us. And let me also share with all of you, in particular with Professor Kohli, that Professor Dillo has motivated the creation of a forum where these things can be discussed for the society. So he has proposed the creation of a forum. We have had few meetings. The forum is, is a forum of retired vice chancellors and directors of the national institutions, which are in and around Punjab, Mohali, Ludhiana, etc. For the Northwest of India, he has proposed a creation of a forum where we can discuss these questions in a serious manner and then impress upon the decision makers. You know, what VP Paul said, education for agriculture, agriculture for education, for those who take decisions for the society. So he has created, we are all a part of his forum and hopefully we should work with him so the people like you and me who have been a part of general education, we adopt the concerns that emerge out of the education for agriculture and take it to the decision makers, the bureaucracy as well as the political leaders that the right decision should be taken for the society. So if all of us join hands and impress upon them, then maybe more responsible decisions would get taken and Somebody like Professor Dillo would not have to throw his hands up that we, he tried and nothing happened. So let's try to change this scenario that of not nothing happens. Let some things happen. So with this, Professor Dillo, on behalf of all of us, I once again thank you. And we hope that you will continue to guide us so that we can all work together and do something more for Punjab as well as for India, which would continue to be an agricultural country because without food, 135 crores we are already, it would grow only for some time more before it flattens out. And it's not only food, we also need quality of life and everything is related to you know, agricultural production and so on and so forth. So thank you very much. And... Uh, So, Maipalji, you can flash the next lecture and then we can close. Satnamurti ji, Namaskar. Namaskar, Namaskar. How are you? All fine, thank you. I didn't want to miss it and I am glad I didn't miss this today's lecture. It was wonderful. Mm, good, good lecture. Our next lecture is on April 24, and it is on Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, its conception, 
present status and impact. It would be delivered by the president of the Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research, namely Professor G. U. Kulkarni. And our guest of honor will be Professor Sajib Khosla, the director of CSR Institute of Microbiology Technology at Chandigarh. So please do join us on April 24th. This would be our 13th lecture in the series. As you all know, we are waiting lectures in all. And the last lecture is, would be delivered by Professor Ashutosh Sharma, the former secretary DSP, and that would be on August 13, 2022, just two days before the Indian Independence. Thank you very much. Have we decided on the time, time on 24th? Yeah, it's 11 a.m. 11, okay. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Right. Okay, Namaskar. Good day to all.